Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Back to the Freezer quest. Now, before I start going through this guide, apologies if my fo uh, my throat's a little bit croaky, uh, got a bit of the man flu at the moment, so, but hopefully you guys will still be able to make sense of what I'm saying. <laughs> um, anyways, these are the requirements and items needed for the quest. So, you need to complete the prequel quest, Some Like It Cold, and Ernest the Chicken. You also need level 37 Slayer, level 45 Runecrafting, and level 50 Divination. And you're also going to need to be able to kill 10 kilowatts that are level 61. That's it for the requirements, now onto the items. So you'll need some combat equipment to fight the kilowatts. Um, some form of protection against desert heat may come in handy, such as enchanted water tiara, if not some water skins. Um, your clockwork suit, however, if you don't have that on you or in your bank, you'll be given another one um, if you uh, basically have lost it before this. Uh, you'll need some insulated boots and an ice cooler, which are both obtained from Slayer Masters. And you'll also need 50 of the following, the flickering, bright, sparkling and gleaming energy. Also if you have the Ardone Cloak 1 uh, or higher it may be worth bringing that with you just so you can have quicker teleport methods to reach Chuck the Polar Bear. Uh, and also um, Polnaviak teleport scrolls uh, unless you have the Bandit Camp Lodestone you can use that alternatively. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest starting point. So we're currently at the Ardone Lodestone, which can be accessed via the Lodestone network. And to start the quest we need to speak to the usual person, which is Chuck the Polar Bear in Ardone Zoo. So you can either head um, from the Ardone Lodestone, or like I said at the beginning of the quest, if you have the Ardone Cloak, teleport to the monastery and then head north there, it's just a little bit less to walk then. So speak to Chuck, ask about the quest and he'll tell you to meet with two PBJ agents who are located in the Relica Marketplace and provide you with a passphrase. Now this passphrase consists of three parts that are highlighted in blue, um, which will be a holiday location, weather option and fish option, and the phrase is different for every player. Now there's a little way uh, to sort of cheat with this so you don't have to worry about forgetting. If you um, finish talking to Chuck and then open your quest journal, it will tell you what the three correct answers are, so you can do that just before speaking to the relevant people. So once you have the past phrase, we want to head to Relica, so the quickest way to get there is by the Fremenic Province Lodestone. Once there, you want to head into Relica and then go near the marketplace and you should see Scott and Munzen, who are these guys dressed as like Eskimos, and you want to speak to them. So they'll tell you that the penguins are plotting to lower the temperature of Gillenor and then a cutscene will take place. So after the cutscene, speak to one of the two uh, guys again and they'll ask you to travel to the desert southwest of Polnaviak to investigate. So like I said at the beginning part of the quest, um, if you have the Polnaviak teleport scrolls you can either choose that to get there, if not if you have the bandit camp lodestone you can use that to get there as well. But either way we're going to head to the uh, destination marked on the minimap. So once you arrive you want to speak with Dundee who is just northeast of the TARDIS and ask him about the penguins. He'll say he didn't see anything but he provides you with a croc speak amulet so you can speak to the crocodile. So equip the amulet and speak to the croc nearby who's brown and he will tell you that the um, temperature in the area is starting to drop and uh, croc will also explain that he used to be an inhabitant of the zoo and knows Chuck. So you then want to investigate the TARDIS and you'll find a sign that says terraforming arctic refrigeration dispersing ice spreader before deciding that you should then tell Chuck. So what you want to do now is return to Chuck the polar bear to tell him about what you found. So once you're speaking to Chuck he'll suggest you find a secret PBJ agent and provides a clue to help find the agent. There is a problem however as the agent's identity is so secret that even Chuck doesn't know his name uh, and for the next part you'll need a penguin suit but obviously if you don't have it with you Chuck will provide you with another um, so you've got one. So when ready you want to return back to the TARDIS with your clockwork suit. 
So when you get near the TARDIS, as long as your uh, cape, main hand and off hand slots are all empty uh, in your equipment, you'll automatically um, put the penguin suit on. So at the TARDIS you want to speak with Emperor Wing, Gordon, Hugh and Elon and what you want to do is ask them both dialogue options about what happened and what happened at the party and if you've gone through all the dialogue correctly it should come up with a prompt saying you've spoken to one of four penguins, two or three, uh, two or four penguins etc. So you will start taking clues after you speak to each penguin to determine who the spy is, however it's the same uh, penguin spy for every um, player, so um, what you want to do is once you've spoken to all of them, you should now have a new option to ask if they're a spy, and you want to speak to secret agent Gordon and ask him if he's a spy. So after speaking to Gordon, we now need to find a secret bunker. So we want to travel to the iceberg, which is by going on the small boat north of the Fremenic Lodestone. So we're going to head there now. So once you reach the iceberg, you need to use the GPS to locate the secret bunker. And what it will do, it will tell you how many paces now uh, north, south, east, and west that you need to navigate uh, in order to find each spot. And it will keep sort of sending you to random um, sort of spots um, while it's still calibrating. And after sort of the fourth or fifth time, eventually it will then um, allow you to find the mysterious hatch leading to the secret bunker. So once you've found a secret bunker, you want to change into your disguise by talking to Jim, the polar bear in the east, and choosing the um, tuxedo time option. Then when you go to enter the uh, hatch, you want to type in the code, which is 1234. Once you're inside, you want to follow the hallway south and then west to the centre of the whole area and enter the doors to the main research facility. You then want to go directly west of the door where you are now into the locker room and search um, the Agent Gordon's locker to find the Deloring device parts list and the incomplete device. And then you need to search the following areas to find the other items. So we need to go to the hide and seek staging area, which is in the northeast corner of the base, um, to find a hat. You then want to go into the some like it cold storage room, which is in the southwest port, um, part of the base, and search all the different crates until you find a hammer and a flax. And then you want to go to the chill out room which is in the northwest and keep searching um, all around to find the penguin book of Gillenor and ice cubes. The ice cubes you'll obviously get from the little machine and the penguin book is from the bookcase. So you want to use the incomplete device with the hat and all the items should then combine together to create a flax cap isotaur. And then with the capacitor you've just made, use it on the incomplete Deloring device to then complete it. So you'll then have a fully functional Deloring device and what you want to do is click it, operate it. It doesn't matter where you're standing uh, in this area. So once you've operated it, you'll be travelled to an isolated monkey island. So um, operating the, if you choose to then operate the device again, it will inform you that it requires calibration. So grab the monkey wrench on the ground uh, in between the trees here, use it on the device and then operate it again. So you'll now be teleported to a fenced in area where Ping and Pong are caged. Uh, you don't necessarily need to talk to them, you just need to grab the penguin bongos and cowbells and use them on the device to fine tune it. Operate the device again and you'll be teleported to a cabbage field with the Gowers brothers. Uh, the device has now stopped working entirely and what you want to do is pick a cabbage, use it on a device to prime it and then it'll be operational again. You'll then arrive in a mining guild with men mining coal and mithril rocks. The device is now crashed and requires something to restart it. So talking to the men with rune pickaxes will reveal them to be robots. So you want to talk to the man with a dragon pickaxe and he'll give you a worthless um, pair of boots. Use the boots on the device to reboot it and now it's fully functional. Click it again and you'll then be transported to the secret bunker in the past. 
So once you're in the secret bunker, you want to go talk to Gordon, who is in the laboratory southwest of the area. Speaking to him, he'll refer you to Elon in the central room with the TARDIS, so you want to go speak to him. Elon will give you a new list of items to collect around the base, and you want to search the following areas for these different items. So you want to head to the prison, which is the very eastern room, and talk to Buzz the Kilowatt to obtain 21 kilowatt energy. To obtain the other 100, we need to go and kill 10 kilowatts in the kilowatt plane, but I would wait for a moment and do that near towards the end of uh, this bit. So you then want to head into the war room, which is directly in the south part of the base, and find a fishing rod. Then go to the Some Like It Cold storage room in the southwest, and you um, search the crates to find a cog and coolant holder. You want to use the cog on the fishing rod to create a fish fenching rod. You want to head to the Area 51 room, which is the very western room, and gather 2,000 pure snow. Once you click it a couple of times, it will automatically start collecting. You then need to clean the mysterious ice block with the lemon found in the crate next to it, and then when you investigate it, the ice block will create 2,000 lemon soul runes. And then you want to head to the chill out room uh, and what you want to do is use your cool ant on the um, ice box to turn into a cooler ant. And then with your ice cooler you want to use that on the ice box to get a uh, ice cooler full of ice. So you should now have all the items other than the remaining kilowatt energy. So what you want to do, you need to uh, exit the base by um, coming through the main entrance that you entered uh, a little while ago. When you're back outside, you want to turn back to your normal film using the polar bear and then teleport to drain a village lodestone. Once a drainer village, head north into the drainer manor and head all the way to the top floor and you'll see a um, portal opening that will take you to the kilowatt plane and it will give you a warning if you suffer from epilepsy to turn the effects off. So when you're inside you want to keep killing all the kilowatts and every time you kill one you'll obtain 10 kilowatt energy and you want to keep doing this until you have 121 energy. Now I accidentally left the plane thinking I had all of them and I actually only had 111 and it does come up with a prompt in the chat box when you have obtained enough so just make sure you have got 121. And then when you have 121 energy, you want to return to the secret base by doing the same way we did before, teleporting to Fremenic Lodestone, heading off to the boat to the iceberg, use um, the tuxedo time option to turn into a penguin and go in the hatch. So once you have all the items, take them to Elon in the central room and you'll hand them all over to him and he'll ask for you to find a way to charge the TARDIS. So what you want to do is use all your um, bright, flickering, gleaming and sparkling energies on the engine energy container to the northwest corner of the room and then you need to charge the batteries by solving the puzzle at the battery control station. So this puzzle works exactly the same way as the board game Mastermind and it's also uh, in King's Ransom Quest you do something very similar to this. So what I'll do, I'll talk you through the way that I solved the puzzle quite easily. So um, what you need to do is obviously click uh, the different energies to fill the different rows. And the idea is to uh, guess the correct combination. So if you start with all of one colour and then um, click check answer, it should then um, provide you with different squares. Now the different squares mean different things. So a white square means you have a peg of the right colour but it's in the wrong spot. A grey square means that you have a peg of the right colour in the right spot. And if there is no square at all, it means you have no pegs of the right colour. So if after doing all I, uh, all of one colour, so for example I did all of green, I was provided with two grey squares and two squares missing completely. So I knew two of these energies were the right colour and now I need to determine if they're in the right spot or not. 
So what I then decided to do is obviously just choose two random locations of the original four. So I chose the um, first two as green, the second two as red. I was provided then with a green box and a white box, which meant that the one of the red energies is also part of the solution, but in the wrong spot. And one of those two green energies is in the correct spot. Again, um, I then went up to determine which one of those two were correct for the green, which I chose the first one and ended the other three as red. It then came up with a white square so I knew that the um, green energy needed to be in the second slot um, as that was originally grey in the previous one. And then once you've determined the sort of um, first two that are correct you can then just sort of use trial and error to determine what the other remaining colours are. Another method you can do which may help, so similar to what I did to start with, if you do all of one colour for the first time and count how many grey squares are there, then do all the same for yellow, all the same for red and all the same for blue, you should determine how many of each colour are required. So if it gave you two um, grey squares um, for the green, you know there's two green. If it then only gave you one grey square for red, you know there's one red. If there was nothing for blue, it means there's no blues. And if there's one for yellow, then there's obviously one yellow. And then it's just a case of determining in which one is the correct spot if you get really stuck i believe if you search on google there's a, like a little like mastermind puzzle solver that will help you but you shouldn't have too much complications with this after a couple of goes so after solving the puzzle the TARDIS is now completed so you want to talk to Elon in the current room then you need to go and talk to Gordon who's in the laboratory to the southwest then talk to Hugh who's in the chill out room to the northwest and then inform Emperor Wing in the main research facility Shortly afterwards, the cool ant starts to leak around the facility and the player will now need to pilot the TARDIS and escape. Following the cutscene, the TARDIS will crash land in the desert and then you'll be prompted to return to Chuck in Ardone Zoo to report the case. So when you return to Chuck, he'll inform you that even though the TARDIS has landed, Gordon has sabotaged the machine so its cooling power is under control. Unwillingly, you'll accept the outcome and it'll come up, congratulations, you completed back to the freezer. You're awarded one quest point, one antique lamp which will give you 500 experience in a skill and you'll get 25,000 divination and runecrafting experience, 15,000 slayer and agility experience and 10,000 invention experience if you've completed the invention tutorial. If you haven't, once you have completed the tutorial, you can come back to Chuck to claim that reward. There will now be one additional penguin for you to find in Penguin Hide and Seek, so that means the total amount of penguin points um, increases each week, and also the experience in Penguin Hide and Seek and um, Balthazar's Big Top Bonanza will now scale with level. So before, each penguin point was worth 25 times um, the experience. So how the penguin points used to be calculated is if you had, for example, 20 uh, penguin points and you used it in the Slayer skill, whatever your Slayer uh, level was, such as 50, it would be times by 25 and then that would be the amount of experience you get. However, the experience is now for 40, so basically if you now do the same, um, you would get 40 times your level for each penguin point, which is about a 60% increase. And very similar to the um, circus activity, Balthazar's Big Top Bonanza, that will also be a similar thing now depending on what your level is when you do the different activities or depend on the experience rewards you get. And as always, two treasure on the keys and two hearts of ice. So there we are, quest complete. So overall, quite a fun quest actually. There's a, quite a lot of references to like Doctor Who, Back to the Future, Star Trek, etc. So um, that's always quite funny if you're a fan of that. Um, and also for the rewards, very decent actually in terms what I believe anyway, um, especially with the penguin point experience being um, increased because uh, penguin point hunting is quite a good way of training uh, hard levels such as like agility and all those sort of time consuming ones. So every week now you'll be able to collect 
a uh, 21 points by doing all the different uh, penguins uh, and also if you have any d uh, distraction diversion tokens um, that you can get awarded from treasure hunter for the weekly events you could reset that to allow you to um, hunt them all again meaning you can get a weekly maximum of 42 penguin points times the 40 experience for each level depending on what one you ask for so actually that's going to help massively for those of you who need to get levels up in sort of difficult skills to train or time consuming skills to train I should say but yeah I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide the only bit you may get a little bit stuck on is the little mastermind bit but like I said as long as you follow the tips I said or follow the method that I did you shouldn't have an overly amount of trouble like I said though if you get really stuck you can search on Google for sort of a mastermind puzzle solver and that will help um, but any other problems you get stuck with please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you as best I can if not thank you for watching please make sure you like favorite comment subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends thanks everyone bye bye